origin of the university lie in a small Baptist college that was put in Warren, Rhode Island, about 20 miles south of uh, Providence, to train uh, ministers uh, for the Baptist sect. That charter was signed in 1764, and hence the 250th anniversary this year. The graduating class in 1769 uh, convinced the president, uh, James Manning, uh, that it was too far out of town and too small. Several communities competed uh, to be the new home for the college, notably Newport and Providence. And indeed, uh, the Browns, the four brothers together, uh, bought the land on which the first building, University Hall, would be built, and then gave the money for University Hall. So you can say that we did not found the university, but we, as a family, or my ancestors uh, certainly, uh, provided the means by which the university became a viable institution. Rhode Island College came to Providence under its old name, and it wasn't until 1804 uh, that it, the name was changed to Brown, and here's why. Time right after the Revolution was very tough for the young college. They weren't getting a lot of students, and so the then president of this college, uh, Maxi uh, put out a call, anybody wants to give $5,000 to my college will get his name put on it. Well, there were no takers. And actually it was Nicholas Brown I, one of the four brothers, Johnny, Josie, Nicky, Mosey, who uh, said we need to have a professorship of oratory. But it was his son, Nicholas Brown Jr., who gave the money uh, in 1804 uh, to establish a professorship of oratory and belles lettres, whatever that really means. And it was, uh, uh, the corporation, when it accepted the gift, uh, changed the name. Right from the very start, in the little Rhode Island College in Warren, it was made very clear that anyone could come no matter what their religious beliefs. And this was interesting because uh, it was set up as a training ground for Baptist ministers, but on the, on the other hand, Roger Williams, the founder of Rhode Island, uh, was absolutely adamant that freedom of conscience should pertain. And Brown University has maintained that tradition down through the years. Uh, there has never been a religious test, as indeed there was at Harvard during that early years. Uh, and even today, though I'm not a graduate, my understanding is that the whole curriculum is set, set up such that people can study what they want, when they want it, providing they fulfill certain standards. And that makes Brown, uh, I hear, very popular among the young. One of the interesting sidelights of the whole slavery question uh, was a major disagreement between John Brown, who felt slave, slaving was okay because it was the right of property, and his brother, Moses Brown, who was an abolitionist. Um, and there is no doubt that uh, the abolitionists uh, efforts of uh, Moses Brown were very effective in getting Rhode Island uh, to uh, be in general uh, anti-slavery. Slaving was and is an evil, but uh, our family would hope that the same amount of attention would be given to slaving which occurs today uh, as was being given to the, what happened in the 18th century. 
the Nightingale Brown House was built by Captain Joseph Nightingale, a sea captain, uh, in 1792, but he sold it to my ancestor, Nicholas Brown, and we continued to live in there the next three generations until uh, my father died in 1979 and my mother in 1985. We learned that the house was about to fall down, and that was no joke. My mother's book collection had f caused the walls to bulge. Uh, the exterior walls were beginning to rot. I had inherited from my father a lovely bookcase on desk made by the famous Newport cabinet maker John Townsend. In my father's will, it was uh, estimated it for, worth $400,000. And so I said, well, maybe we should sell that. Well, it sold for $12.1 million. We spent about $4 million redoing the house and then gave the house and the remaining money and some of the furnishings uh, to Brown University for the establishment of the John Nicholas Brown Center for Public Humanities and Cultural Heritage. Another example of our family's involvement with the university is the Anne S. K. Brown military collection. Its origins go back to when my mother was 12 years old and had a passion for miniature soldiers, uh, tin soldiers. Uh, but when she married my father, who was a fine arts major, he asked the pertinent question, how do you know that the uniforms painted on these soldiers are accurate? And he guided her into becoming a book collector. The books kept coming and coming and coming and were stuffed all over our house and in fact caused the walls to buckle. Um, my mother, realizing what was happening, started transferring the books to the university's special collections, which are housed in the John Hay Library. And she also gave an endowment in her will uh, to provide a curator for the collection. And today, I think it's safe to say that that collection is foremost in the world. Uh, every day, it gets pulsed by people wanting to know who is, what the uniform was of an ancestor in a portrait, what uniforms to put for a movie, uh, and so forth.